आखिरी बात जिसको इस वक्त देश जानना चाहता है चीफ कोऑर्डिनेटर ऑफ द जी ट्वेंटी Please note that we may not be able to accommodate all your questions given the time limit. Uh, but I would request now, sir, if you would like to take the floor first. Thank you. Thank you very much, friends from the media. It is a great pleasure for all of us to speak to you, uh, even as the G20 summit deliberations continue. Uh, you may be aware. that at the start of the second session uh, the summit has adopted the g20 new delhi leaders declaration what i would like to do is to give you an overarching perspective of india's g20 presidency uh, thereafter i would request my colleague finance minister nirmala sitaraman to speak about the key outcomes from the finance track the indian g20 sherpa uh, amitab kant will then similarly speak on the results of the sherpa track uh, we would thereafter be very glad to respond to your questions and comments the message of our presidency as you are all aware is that we are one earth one family and we share one future this draws the entire proceedings of the new delhi summit are in fact organized accordingly with three sessions devoted to each aspect of this theme now reflecting this approach we have consciously sought to make this g20 as inclusive and broad based as possible it is witnessing the participation of its obviously its 20 member states nine invitee nations and 14 international organizations it is a matter of particular satisfaction for us that the african union has this morning become a permanent member of the g20 that too during the indian presidency this is in keeping with the priority that we attach to addressing the urgent concerns of the global south you would recall that at the beginning of our presidency prime minister at prime minister modi's initiative 125 nations were consulted to express the voice of the global south in terms of its organization and program the indian presidency if i may say so has been exceptional events have been spread across 60 cities which are truly across the length and breadth of india there has been a popular participation and a societal involvement of an extraordinary degree the interest in g20 proceedings have been particularly strong among our youth it has been an opportunity to showcase our culture traditions and heritage as well the g20 has contributed to making india world ready and the world india ready the declaration that the leaders have agreed on today focuses on promoting strong sustainable balanced and inclusive growth it seeks to accelerate progress on sdgs and and has come up with an action plan accordingly it envisages a green development pact for a sustainable future it endorses high level principles on lifestyle for sustainable development voluntary principles on hydrogen the chennai principles for a sustainable and resilient blue economy and the deccan principles on food security and nutrition among others the transformative and inclusive role of technology has been highlighted with a focus on digital public infrastructure the indian presidency's proposal of a one future alliance has also been noted the g20 has reaffirmed the fundamental importance of gender equality and committed to half the digital gender gap by 2030 recognizing that the post pandemic world order must necessarily be different from the world before it 
The leaders have also emphasized the need to reinvigorate multilateralism and reform international financial institutions. This is particularly relevant to managing global debt vulnerabilities. So, as you can see, there have been many far-reaching and very consequential policies and decisions that have been agreed upon today. Keeping all that in mind, I would, at this stage, request Finance Minister to highlight the key issues from the finance track. Thank you, Jay Shankar Ji. As, as was said by the External Affairs Minister, under the guidance of Honorable Prime Minister, India's G20 Presidency has worked for the theme One Earth, One Family, One Future. So today we are in a position to adopt through the finance track, people-centric, action-oriented and far-sighted approach and as a result of which several outcomes of the finance track will certainly reflect uh, these objectives with which we started the negotiations. It has been very clear in our mind that we should ensure that no one is left behind in our pursuit of global solutions. So we have endeavored to support countries, especially those from the global south, to be an integral part of the global decision-making process. The G20, as you all know, is a very diverse group. Each country is at different milestones of economic development, and their trajectory is also very different in achieving their developmental goals. So through well-curated debates, and careful assimilation of all the perspectives, the Indian Presidency has crafted solutions that resonate with each member, offering a shared path forward for all. Many action-oriented outcomes of this Presidency contain comprehensive strategies that cater to the unique needs and aspirations of all developing nations. We assume the Presidency at a challenging time of geopolitical tension, the Indian Presidency has worked to ensure that these divergences don't overshadow the core developmental outcomes or concerns of the global community that demand collaborative solutions. So today, as I look back at the 10 months of Indian Presidency, I am left with gratitude and satisfaction I can confidently state that the Indian G20 Presidency has walked the talk. Now, let me share with you just some of the key achievements of the Indian Presidency, the finance track. Um, first one is the outcomes which are focused on strengthening the MDBs to address shared global challenges of the 21st century. So under this strengthening MDBs, there are four key highlights that I'd like to bring to your notice. The first one is agreement on the need for a better, bigger, and more effective MDBs. It is so necessary to have better, bigger, and more effective MDBs because the developmental demands from all across the globe is so high, these institutions will have to be better and bigger. This is also going to contribute to enhancing representation and voice of developing countries in the decision.